Uh, so, uh, so my talk is about building the Ethereum 2.0 sub substrate. So, uh, uh, before I go into the talk, a short introduction of me. I'm Wei Tang. I'm a core developer. I party technology, and I work on uh, Ethereum and uh, Ethereum 2.0. So, uh, uh, we really want to in this talk talk about uh, how we got involved into Ethereum 2.0 and uh, some uh, uh, quite hard lessons we learned in the process. Uh, so, uh, so like our journey for Ethereum 2.0 is really about building a generic uh, blockchain framework because uh, we, for, at party, we build a lot of blockchains, and we really want to uh, make sure we don't write too many duplicate codes. So the first thing uh, I remember for the Ethereum 2.0 was the hybrid Casper. Uh, at that time, we were uh, experimenting with building. Uh, having a generic engine design in our uh, party Ethereum plant. So we have support for finality and uh, we also have support for custom fork twice rules. Uh, so in that case, adding the hybrid Casper FIG turns out to be uh, quite uh, relatively easy task. So we had a, a working hybrid Casper implementation quite early uh, and it actually works. So, uh, uh, but later uh, it comes to the second phrase, which is, uh, uh, we decided uh, to build a separate blockchain uh, for Ethereum 2.0. So uh, for us, uh, we moved to the Beacon subject runtime. Uh, so for the hybrid Casper, there's really some performance issues and we had to abandon that. Uh, so to create a separate blockchain for Ethereum 2.0. Uh, and what I mean by uh, Beacon subject runtime uh, is basically uh, beacon chain uh, as a subject runtime. Uh, so I really want to go into the, like, some of the, the details of uh, how we think uh, the beacon chain can work on subject runtime. But before that, uh, probably a really uh, short introduction about uh, the subject runtime. Uh, so Subtrade is an engine to build blockchains, and uh, we figure out that there are two main things that every blockchain needs. It's basically uh, consensus and uh, state execution. Uh, it's really hard to generate uh, the consensus part because different consensus can require different, like entirely different uh, structures. Like some consensus need finality, some consensus don't need finality, some consensus need to uh, just need the past block or some, and other probably need to uh, like to refer back to a lot of uh, previous block and also some consensus need to uh, have a lot of accelerated data. Some doesn't really need that. And also we have those vast majority of different forks twice rules. That's really hard to generalize, but we have some helpers. And the second part is uh, state execution. Uh, so we figure out we probably can generate the state execution part and uh, we just call it uh, runtime. Uh, so uh, we have a current, our current uh, subject runtime design has, uh, has some fixed things. Like we have a definition of a uh, block. Uh, we have something like an uh, extrinsic, which uh, includes what we all know called transactions, uh, or and the other part is the uh, inherent extrinsic, which includes things like uh, timestamp, a uh, satellite guide, and we also have digits item, which is similar to logs. Uh, in Serum, uh, and we have a definition of runtime externalities, basically how the runtime talk which the outside world. Uh, so we have all these things, and they have some defined structures. Uh, and one thing we want to figure out is how uh, how we can reuse those structures and make it work on for building our Ethereum 2.0 client because. If we can do that, then we can we use a lot of the subject contract and uh, get uh, something for free, like the networking or uh, the subject uh, light client protocol. So uh, what we end up doing is uh, we create a wafer block. Uh, this is basically says uh, that we create a separate uh, block definition. Uh, this block definition, uh, we, we call it wafer block, follows a subject definition of what a block is. Uh, basically, there's a defined structure, uh, and we also have the, the, the like the unmodified beacon block. And for uh, each beacon block, we make sure that there is a unique corresponding wafer block. 
So in that case, uh, given a beacon block, you can always generate uh, generate a vapor block, but you might need some past uh, block data. It, it, it may not be so trivial, but, but it should be in theory possible to generate a, a vapor block. Uh, we also have a vapor state, which also is a vapor structure on top of the beacon state. And uh, this vapor, vapor state uh, follows substrate definition. And uh, uh, the, the state is basically a Markov tree. And uh, this Markov tree also has a definition in subject. And what we do, uh, and that Markov tree may, uh, is, in, is different, is currently different uh, than what is defined on uh, Ethereum 2.0. So what we do, we define a child tree. And uh, this tree structure is exactly the same as the beacon uh, tree structure. Uh, this is uh, like a, a working uh, library you can use on subject. So we define a child tree. And uh, in this child tree, we follow exactly what the beacon uh, block is. Uh, and we store the actual beacon state in the viper state. So there's, a, there's always a child tree which has the exact uh, state root of the uh, beacon state and we wrap it with some other state, probably some cache or other information that such we need. Uh, so to look into the actual thing, it will be like this, like this is the standard beacon block. Uh, we have the slot definition, block root, state root, uh, block body, and the uh, signature, uh, things like that. And uh, for the subtree block, uh, we basically make it like this. So you can say some of some of the, the items are exactly the same as uh, as what is on the beacon block. So you should there's a unique corresponding. Uh, and for stuff that doesn't have a definition that is consensus specific, for example, the slot uh, and uh, the signature, we, we just put it on the digits, uh, which uh, because it's in the header, it's always readable no matter you're a full client or light client. Uh, and the last thing we need to care about is uh, this state root uh, because, uh, I mean, in the end, we need to verify uh, this, this block structure. Uh, the issue is in, even if there's a unique correspondence, uh, this signature is still a beacon, uh, a beacon block signature. So uh, it doesn't verify this state root, but instead it verifies the beacon block state root. Uh, so in that case, uh, we need to find a way to make sure uh, that we can also verify this state root. So how do we do that? We basically, uh, it's not shown here, but we basically create a second DD structure uh, that creates the proof. So an additional uh, the state proof that goes from the beacon state root into the subject state root, the vapor block state root that we need. Uh, and uh, why are we doing this? So uh, this is all about reusability. Uh, so when we create this vapor block and uh, we create a consensus engine uh, in subject. We can then just directly plug it, plug it into subject, and it will work with the rest of the uh, the, the subject code base. So we can get uh, like a separate networking and also the subject light client uh, component for free, and that will be working on Ethereum 2.0. Uh, so we indeed have some uh, obstacles. Uh, that's why. Uh, so the, the issue is we try to do too early of this thing uh, in the specification process. The issue is uh, at that time the specification is still changing a lot and that creates a lot of prob problem for us because for each new release, we are basically rewriting everything and uh, that kind of uh, slow down the process quite a little bit. Uh, we still lack a little bit primitives. Uh, we have the child Markov tree structure, but we currently don't have a binary Markov tree child tree setup. So that thing that is we are adding. Uh, the BLS works on on, uh, on the runtime uh, like by itself, but the issue is if we don't add add new primitives, the BRS will be too slow for for, for production use. So that's also some primitives we need to add. 
And because we are kind of uh, not too fast on that, uh, the current plans is we build a, we do a two, uh, like two plant setup. So basically we have the uh, subject runtime plant still in place, but we still want to catch up with the rest of the team. So what we plan to do is we want to build a beacon core and we want to plug that beacon core in the future, we want to plug this beacon con into the subfield runtime. Uh, but currently, we are also building, uh, using this beacon core to build a subject, uh, to build a Ethereum 210 client without subfield runtime. Uh, but we are still trying to use a limited set of subfield components so that uh, we can reuse things and not, not write too much. Uh, and later, uh, still using this beacon con, we want to. Uh, build a full subject runtime on top on top of it. So these two two uh, two client setup is basically uh, one with subject runtime and another with not. And uh, we didn't join the interop on site, but uh, I tried to hack it, hack it at home, and it mostly works uh, last last month. So. Uh, so basically, we are talking about uh, writing generic clients and uh, for on Ethereum 2.0. Uh, so in the beginning, we have hybrid Casper, uh, which unfortunately we need to abandon because of performance issues. Uh, and uh, later, we decided to uh, build beacon chain on subject uh, runtime uh, using what is called a Viper block. Uh, in this way, we can reuse a lot of, a lot of the subject components. Uh, and our current plan is to build double clients. Basically, the first client is for without subject runtime to catch up with the, the, the mandate release and the rest of team schedule, and uh, another with subject runtime so we can continue to explore uh, building a really generic uh, blockchain framework uh, for everything. So that's all. Thank you.